Antonio, uh, obviously some development over the last 24 hours. I'm curious where things stand with the organization and Devante Adams, and there was also a report about a social media post involving Devante's status with the team that, that you'd like. I was wondering if you could address that. Yeah, Devante's dealing with a hamstring. He's rehabbing, and the rest of us are focused on Denver. Is he gonna be here in the building today? Or? He's supposed to be rehabbing. So you know, yesterday, Devontae went on the Up and Adam show and discussed his, I guess, the social media posts earlier this week. Uh, was that something that was accidental on your part in terms of liking the post? Or? Yeah, I'm just focused on Denver. Coach, how do you think Jack Jones responded to missing uh, some time to start the last game? Oh, uh, no, I think Jack Jones handled it like a pro, right? Like I said, after the game, that was between me and Jack. Um, we did what he had to do, and Jack did what he had to do when he won the game. Thought he tackled, thought he was physical, thought the effort was there, everything that we asked him to do, he did. Have you communicated with Devante, and um, where where is the relationship uh, with you and? I mean, Devante talk often. What was it? Have you talked to him since all of this? I believe that between me and Devante. Are you concerned at all about this being a distraction? No, no, because we're focused on Devante. Coach, what can you say about how the offense performed last week in Devante's absence? I thought some guys stepped up. DJ Turner. Right, got him some action, tried to give him a deep shot on the, the third play of the game. Just missed him there. Um, then we got him back on that reverse. I thought it was really good. Thought Trey Tucker, who you know, we voted as a Raider of the Week for us. Thought he did an outstanding job. Just not with the receptions, with the running ball, blocking. Everything we asked him to do, he really stepped up. That was huge for us as well. And I think you guys saw it with McAllister. We put him all over the field, <laughs> gave him a little you know, toss crack, and he, he hit the first one, and the second one didn't look as pretty. But I thought he did an excellent job of just, you know, all hands on deck for that game. Does Tyreek need to do a better job? Tyreek need to do a better job of avoiding big hits and better run. It seems like he's been running a little bit straight up. I think he's realized that they're going to hit him. He better brace himself. He better, better lower that shoulder. He's not the biggest guy, right? He's not the biggest guy, but he's one of the toughest guys, right? And uh, I think he did take some hits last week. But listen, credit to Cleveland. That, that was a really physical. They had their starters on a kickoff team. They had starters on a punt team. So he wasn't getting hit by the backups. He was getting hit by the real guys. And listen, pro football. I think that was his first or second game suited up. So, I, you know, but he did make some plays and you know, we asked him to do some things and obviously he'll grow to learn from that. Is Michael Mayer back in the building today? Uh, Mike's still doing personal. How long do you expect him to be out? When, whenever he's done with his personal stuff. You've dominated Denver for a while now. I think you've been kind of a psychological edge for this point. I don't know about in 2024 we haven't. <laughs> we haven't played him yet. so. <clears throat> the past is the past. You can't talk about those 8, 12, 20 games, whatever many years back. Uh, we're talking about this year, 2024 Raiders and the Broncos, and they're playing really good. Uh, they're coming off a two-game winning streak on the road against two good quarterbacks and teams, and it's going to be a challenge for us you know, on the road against that team. You talked about the scheme last week offensively, and then the two the two receivers score on runs. Do you see more of that, kind of like more creative stuff coming along with those guys? I thought it was a good job by you know, our office and staff just trying to find ways to get the running game going, however it, matters, however it goes, and whoever it goes through, right? But really, you know, each and every week is different. You know, the team last week was playing crash nines, and they didn't hold the edges, and we felt that our speed can get there. So we'll see how this week looks when we prepare for the other Broncos. What are you seeing with the Broncos pass rush? Not a lot of big names, but getting a lot of other results. Yeah, well-coached team, well-coached team. From you know, the coordinator to the position coaches, I mean, you just, it doesn't matter about names when you play good team defense, and they're very sound. And obviously, they play a lot of man, you see a lot of pressure from this team, but up front, you see a bunch of guys that just, they're doing their job. And when the opportunity comes, they're making the most of it. I know you talked about Snowden, his uh, big play, obviously, in the last game, he's had like, several big plays for you guys. I guess how much pride do you take when a guy fights the way that he did just to get his opportunity in a big play? I think it speaks volumes for the culture that we set, right? We said the best players will play, and when they get the opportunity, just make the most of them. And he's doing that. It started on special, really, let's go back. It started on practice squad, giving a hell of a look. An opportunity comes up. He's ready. He's prepared. He goes into the special teams. He does that. And then, okay, look, we want to play a different defense. We want to get a bigger body out there. And, listen, we're dropping him in coverage. <laughs> we're actually in the rush. We're actually doing a lot of things. And, you know, credit to the player, really, you know, putting in the time and effort in the building to study and along with our coaches to get them prepared and to show it up, obviously, on Sundays. Snowden and some of those other defensive linemen might have had bigger splash plays, but uh, Tyree played a, a ton, I think the most he has uh, yeah. in a while. What have you made of his progress since he's been back from injury? I, I think I've said this before, you know, rookie season last year, coming off injuries, you know, late start to the season, picked it up at the end of the season for us last year when I took over. Um, and then this year, it's kind of one of those days. And you just never know what is going to happen with a young player. And we just want to build off of that. And that's why I told them, don't, 
Don't not, no, nobody go out there and try to be Max Crowley, right? Because we didn't have Max last week. Just be Tyree Wilson. Who does that player look like? What does that uh, look like on film? And just be consistent, right? And that's what we talked about. And I thought it was, it was good to put on film because you can now go back and look at that and encourage that throughout the week. Well, it's been uh, talked about the team trying to establish an identity. I'm wondering, you know, four games in, are you beginning to see an identity take shape? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I do think so. I think one, you know, we want to play with effort. We want to be you know, prideful in our, in our body of work. We want to be passionate. We want to be physical. You know, we want to be a smart team. I think we're still doing a good job in penalties. You know, I know it was number one a couple weeks ago, but we're, we're right there in the middle of the pack, or excuse me, the top of the pack. We're one of the better teams, the least penalized team. So that's that's good. We got to do a better job of not turning the football over. So yeah, I, I think you know, the first month when you look at it, you do a self scout. We're building it. I don't think we're there yet to sit there and just tell you, yes, our identity is grounded. I can really just go back to that. But I think it is a work in progress, and I think we're getting better at it. And Blaine, given, given all the reports that are out there about Devontae, how are you able to focus simply on the Broncos coming up? I've been doing it wrong. Are you talking about me personally? You, and then how do you? Oh, because, I mean, it starts you know. with me, because that's my only focus. I get paid here to, to get ready each and every week for the opponent. Uh, I don't blink. I don't flinch. I don't know. I've said it before. Like, I've been through enough of my life with adversity and stuff that it doesn't bother me. I just move forward. The next obstacle in front of me is the Denver Broncos. And that's what I presented to my team, and that's what they're doing right now in the meeting. We're about to go out to practice and do it versus the Broncos. Do you have a sense that they absorb that message? 100%. Do you have an update on Max? Do you have an update on Max? Yeah, still battling. Still battling. Regardless of it's Devontae or any other player, if there was a trade conversation, would that be a conversation with you to let's go, conference, you know, combination of the both? How would that go? I think everybody involved, right? Uh, myself, Telesco, Marquez. Coach, with the Devontae Adams situation, is there a like a message or a tone or a precedent you're trying to set with the situation at all? Or no, business as usual, just gonna keep rolling. I mean, it's the NFL things come up every day. Since I'm taking over this job, it's, it's been obstacles. Just another. And so with, with Max, uh, it's kind of going back and forth. He got hurt against the Ravens, and he played the next week. and Didn't play. Is it like a, a pain threshold situation, or are you just trying to be cautious? Or? It's a long season. It's an injury that, you know, if you think about it, last year, the, the injury happened later in the season, right? So we're scrambling, we're, you know, we're scratching and clawing, trying to get in the playoffs. Now it's early. You can take advantage of the early games, the early part of the season, get them healthy. We've got a bye week in the middle. And you know, at the end of the day, my job is to protect Max Crosby from Max Crosby. If it's up to Max, he'll be out there practicing every day at every game. We won't miss one snap, and we've seen that over the years. But I think as, you know, you, you look at the player, you look at the organization, you got to do what's best for both. And that's what we're doing. That's good. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank, thank you. Guys.